Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Let's then look at how to find the general solutions of three equations in three unknowns. So let's say we have a system of three equations. Ax plus by plus cz equals to l, dx plus ey plus fz equals to m, and gx plus hy plus jz equals to n. And we rewrite them in a matrix form as ax equals to b where A equals to the whole matrix of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, and X equals to X, Y, Z, and B equals to L, M, N in the matrix form. And for this equation to be valid, we need A, the matrix A, to become non-singular because what does non-singular mean? It means that its inverse exists. Or we can rewrite this as A minus 1 exists. This is because to find the solution, we need the inverse matrix so that when we move it to the other side, we have this equation x equals to A minus 1 times B and we can find x. So how do we find A minus 1? So A minus 1 equals to the adjoint A over the determinant of A and the adjoint A can be rewritten as a very complicated form but it is actually quite straightforward if we look more carefully. So we have each cofactors of the matrix A inside and start with the plus and we will do it like the way we find determinants. So for the first cofactor we just look at A and we have E, F, H, J as our component, and so on and so forth. But then also we need to remember that the sign is important as well. So the first one will be positive, and moving on the right, we have negative, and alternate positive and negative all the way until the end. And for this adjoint A to be found, we need this whole equation to be transposed at the end. In a real exam, you don't have to write out all these little details. You can straight away do it in your brain and write out the answers. This is to save the time. Well, for the transpose, I will explain it later in the example on how to do it. And now let's look at a more detailed explanation. Let's say we want to find the cofactor of the second row and the third column. So what do we do? So the first step is to delete the second row and the third column of the matrix A. Okay, so we just cancel out the two rows like that. And the second step is to form the determinant. So we have cancelled out the two rows, right? We are left with A, B, G, and H. So we rewrite them in a determinant form. And finally, we want to check the sign if they are correct. And to check if they are correct, we will do it in this way. So it's to multiply it by negative one to the power of, because it's the second row and the third column, so two plus three which is negative 1 to the power of 5 equals to negative 1. So we can see that the component at the second row and the third column has got a negative sign. Let us now take a look at some examples. So given that A, this matrix, we need to find the inverse of this matrix. So using the formula we had just now, we need to know what is the adjoint A first. So using the formula that we have just learned just now, we are going to write each cofactor of each component with the correct signs 
plus minus plus minus plus minus until the final term. Next, we simplify each cofactors into a single value. Once we are done, we are going to transpose this matrix. So what does transpose mean? It means swapping the values diagonally. As you can see, we swap negative 17 and negative 6. We swap 5 and negative 1. And we swap negative 2 and negative 1. And we got this transpose matrix. And this whole matrix is now the adjoint A. To find the determinant, you need to know a kind of identity, which is A times adjoint A equals to the determinant of A times identity matrix. So using this formula, we know that the determinant of A equals to the matrix A times its adjoint A. So you've got the matrix A, you copy down, and then copy down adjoint A, and then we perform multiplication, and we obtain the matrix with a diagonal value of 4. And the 4 is the determinant of the matrix. Substituting both adjoint A and the determinant, we get the inverse of A. Let's now prove this identity. We first let AB times AB minus 1 equals to its identity matrix. Um, the minus 1 should be outside the bracket. Sorry about the error. Next, we are going to add the inverse of A on each side of the equation. And then we let the A minus 1 times A cancels out to become an identity. And we have IB times A times B minus 1 equals to A minus 1 because A minus 1 times its identity is A minus 1. And it follows that we have B minus 1 added on each side of the equation and the b minus 1 times b we eventually get its identity matrix and the identity matrix will disappear and we get our answer next we will be looking at the theory of invariance if a point remains fixed and it has undergo transformation through a matrix and in the end it has remained in place exactly where it began we refer it as an invariant point. So there is a universal invariant point, which is the origin. And it is always invariant. Why do we say so? So we let the origin undergo a transformation of ABCD matrix. And after the matrix multiplication, we realize that the point remain at the same place, which is the origin, 0, 0. And it has not changed its original location. So we say that origin is an invariant point as it always maps to itself. Also, we have a line of invariant points as well as an invariant line and we will differentiate them by looking at some examples later. So in this first example, we want to find the line of invariant points of the linear transformation represented by the following matrix. So we first write out linear equation using the matrix. So we have 4.2x plus 1.6y equals to x because we want to match to itself. And we have 1.6x plus 1.8y equals to y and we want to match to itself. And we simplify both equation by rearranging them and we obtain a line equation of y equals to 2x. So any point on the line y equals to minus 2x is invariant. So let's test the results. By plugging in an arbitrary value a, we have x equals to a and y equals to minus 2a. After performing matrix multiplication, we obtain the same point again, a and minus 2a. Hence a line of invariant points. Finally, we want to find the invariant line of the transformation given by this matrix. We assume the line y equals to mx plus c, and then we let an arbitrary point x and y undergo a transformation 
and eventually maps to x prime and y prime. And then we perform the matrix multiplication and we obtain this linear equation. So we rewrite this equation as x prime equals to 3x plus 2 times y, which is mx plus c, and we simplify the equation. We perform the same operation for y prime. So now we have x prime equals to 3 plus 2m times x plus 2c, and y prime equals to 5 plus 6m times x plus 6c. So now for the invariant line, we want it to be y prime equals to m times x prime plus c. So we rewrite y prime on the left and m times x prime and then plus c. Then we simplify the whole equation in terms of x and c and we obtain a quadratic equation for m in terms of x and a linear equation for m in terms of c. So for the right hand side of the equation, we need them to be zero. And the x cannot be 0, so we know that 2m squared minus 3m minus 5 must be 0. And we solve for this quadratic equation, we obtain m equals to 5 over 2 or minus 1. After that, we also need to assume that 2m, either 2m minus 5 must be 0 or c must be 0 for the whole equation to be valid. So we simplify this equation and we obtain that m equals to 5 over 2 or c equals to 0. So when m equals to 5 over 2, c cannot be 0 and so we know that the first invariant line is y equals to 5 over 2x plus c and the c can be any value. While the second equation is y equals to minus 1 times x plus 0 because when m is equal to minus 1, c must be 0. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions, and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get Genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.